For question number 9, we are going to simplify this complex fraction 1 plus 2 over x minus a over x squared all over 1 minus a over x to the third power. Whenever we are trying to simplify a complex fraction, it means that you see you have a big fraction, but you also have like small fractions on the top and also on the bottom. Whenever you are trying to simplify this, what you need to do first is that you need to identify the LCD, the lowest common denominator. I will pay attention to, well, this one is not really like a fraction, but I will only pay attention to the denominators first. I have x, x squared, and x to the third power. And in this case, the LCD will be x to the third power, the highest power of x. So let me write this down. I will need to know what the LCD is first, which is x to the third power. And then, what we're going to do next is that I will multiply every, everything by the LCD, which is x to the third power. So I see 1, I will multiply that with x to the third power. And 2 over x, I will also multiply with that with x to the third power. So I will just put multiply x to the third power. Similarly right here, multiply x to the third power. And on the bottom as well, 1 times x to the third power minus a over x to the third power times x to the third power, like that. So that's the first step. And if we do this, the very next step is that you will see you don't need to worry about uh, small fractions inside of big fractions anymore. We get the first part right here, we have just 1 times x to the third power, x to the third power. And we have plus. 2 over x times x to the third power. 1x is in the denominator, and then we have 3 of the x on the numerator. So cancel out 1 of it, so you get x squared. I get plus 2x squared. And we have minus 8 over x squared times x to the third power. I have 2x, 2 of the x multiplying on the bottom, and there's 3 of the x on the top. I cancel two of them out on the bottom, and I get one left on the top. So I have minus 8x, like that. On the bottom, over, 1 times x to the third power is once again get just x to the third power. And that will be minus the x to the third power and the x to the third power bottom and the top, exactly the same. So I can cancel them out completely x to the third power right here, minus 8, just like that. And let's see, is there anything else that we can do? So whenever you have what we call rational expression, what we can do is we're trying to factor it and see if there's any common factors. If that's the case, we can cancel the top and the bottoms again, the same factors. So on the top, notice that I have x to the third power, x squared, and x. So I can first of all factor out an x. And I would get x squared left. Okay. Because I took one of the x out. So um, x squared left in the first part. Plus I have the 2. But originally I have x squared. I took 1 out, so I have an x left. Originally I have negative, I have minus ax. The x is now out of the parentheses, outside of the parentheses, so I just have minus 8, like that. So that's pretty much the first part that we can do on the top. Factor out um, the, a common factor, which is the x. And on the denominator, you see that we have x to the third power minus 8. And notice that for this one, for the denominator, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use the factoring formula for the x to the third powers, okay? The difference of two cubes. We are going to use the formula that a to the third power minus b to the third power, okay? That is equal to a minus b, and we have the second parentheses, and the second parentheses will be a to the second power plus AB and plus B to the second power. So this is the factoring formula for the um, difference of two cubes. 
and you see that this is x to the third power minus 8. 8 happens to be 2 to the third power. That's why we're going to use that. So, x to the third power, I'm going to change color. It will be just the red x to the third power, like that. Add the minus, you bring down the minus right here. But then I have the 8 right here, I will write that as 2 to the third power. And this way I can match exactly with my formula that I have uh, right here for you. So x to the third power minus 2 to the third power will be, first parentheses, it will be just x, which is the a, okay, minus 2. So that's the a minus b. We have x minus 2 here. And then for the bigger parentheses, we will have the first part, which is x, and you raise that to a second power, x squared. And notice that this is a plus. Plus, and you have a times b. So I will just write that as x times 2 for now. x times 2. a times b. And then the last part, I'll be adding 2 squared. Yeah, I'll be adding 2 squared, b squared, which is 2 squared, like that. Okay. And let's see. If there's anything that we can do right there, over there. First parenthesis is just x minus 2. Doesn't really matter. Right? Doesn't really change anything. But for the second parenthesis, we have the x squared. Still stays the same. And I can write that as plus. 2x, okay? Instead of saying x times 2, that's read as 2x. And the last one, instead of saying 2 squared, that's read as plus 4. Okay? So this is what we'll get for the denominator, and that's what we're going to use. We'll put this to the denominator right here. Replace the x to the third power minus 8. So that goes here. I will get x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4, like that. And you should be really familiar with these formulas because this is the formula that we are going to use to factor um, difference of the cubes. And um, one thing to be careful is that if you have a subtraction right here, a to the third power minus b to the third power, you first start with a minus b, then you times a squared plus ab plus b squared. It's like minus minus plus. And there's also a different formula when you're adding, but I'll leave that to you to show, um, look, it, look that up. Anyways, so this is what we have at the moment. And let's take a look if there's anything else that we can simplify it. Um, this one right here is not factorable. That's why the formula stops right here. But then, if you look at the top right here, I have x squared plus 2x minus 8. This is actually refactorable. So if I factor that out, let's put two parentheses to get ready. So x squared, well, I can break that down as x times x. And then um, negative 8, I can look at that as minus 4 plus, times positive 2, right? But then I want to produce the positive 2. So let me try with positive 4 and minus 2 x plus 4 times x minus 2. x plus 4 times x minus 2 is the factor for this one. And the denominators stay the same. x minus 2, that's, this one is not factorable. x squared plus 2x plus 4 like this. So we did all the factorings like this, and here's the, here's the best part. Look for uh, the top and bottom to see which one is in common. I see that I have the x minus 2 here, and also an x minus 2 here. So I'm going to cancel this out, and cancel that out. Final answer. I get x times x plus 4. Okay, that's on top. Over the denominator, which is x squared, well, don't really need the parenthesis, x squared plus 2x plus 4, just like that. And that's pretty much it. That's the most that we can do. Do not cancel the 4. Do not get rid of the x or things like that. Because 
um, this is by itself, like the parentheses. Keep in mind, you can only cancel parentheses because they are factors, like this. But this is the most that we can do. And that would be the answer for that.